Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, so myself, uh, my name is Ishan Karateng, um, and I'm a technical solution specialist for cloud security. We also have my colleague um, on, the, on the call today as well, Chris um, Frost, who is a technical solutions architect um, for cloud security. So if you have any questions, um, you know, do make sure that you put them in the Q&A box there. Um, and, you know, uh, and Chris will, you know, uh, will be able to to kind of help you with, um, you know, with some of those answers. Uh, sorry, some of those questions as well. So you know, do make sure that you, you know, if you have anything, you know, during the webinar, do make sure that you um, that you kind of utilise that as well. But very much today, um, it's looking at three steps to better security. Looking at how do we defend better and respond faster with security that works together. So. Kind of kicking off and, and kind of looking at uh, uh, kind of over the past several years, um, you know, there's been a trend, um, you know, that's, that's increased, you know, where we've seen, you know, a lot more threats and attacks appear. And of course, you know, that means that there's, a, there's more alerts and incidents that kind of a, that increase with that as well. And because of that, you know, we have, you know, there's been more tools and data to sift through, um, which then ultimately leads to, you know, less time to deal with the real issues. And it's something that we need to, to really look at. How do we deal, you know, with this, you know, over the, you know, over the past several years with there being so many, you know, so many, uh, you know, more known threats as such, you know, and, and, and with that, obviously, the, the kind of greater Alerting uh, and an instance. How do we begin to, to kind of solve that challenge? But then we build into some of those challenges. You know, what are what are they as such? Well, you know, the first one is time, and and you know, many of our customers begin to say, well, look, you know, help us give my team, um, you know, time back, and help us work together faster. It's a really, really key one there. Um, and to build on that expertise, you know, my team can't be experts at every threat. Give us the answers at our fingertips. It's another key one there. And then the evidence as well. You know, we need, you know, we can't dig for answers. Um, you know, give us one place to find answers across all of our tools. And, you know, those, those three key challenges here, you know, with that data, obviously, you know, these challenges increase. Um, and therefore, it's something that we need to look at, um, you know, we we need to look at solving as such. But, you know, to, to kind of, you know, build on that as well, you know, we know that the answer isn't just to throw, um, you know, more security products at the problem. Uh, and the reason why is that, you know, there's around 75, on average, 75 security tools per enterprise, um, and 91% think integration is just a challenge. And, of course, with that, you'll lead to, as this person here, you know, on the slide is, it's just ending up with headaches. You know, if you've got to sift through 75 tools um, to look at, you know, to, uh, to look at what's going on and actually understand what's going on into the environment, it can very much begin um, to become overwhelming. And therefore, we need to look at, again, trying to solve that to kind of help with those challenges that we saw previously too. So what is our uh, kind of new reality? You know, what, is, what, is, what has been changing? Well, a lot of it in terms of the way, you know, the way we work has changed. You know, if we look at apps and data, they have all began to move to the cloud. You know, the usage around SaaS applications has only increased over the, you know, if we look over the past 10 years, you know, we've seen a humongous increase in, in, in you know, um, uh, in, in, in uh, companies, sorry, you know, using, uh, you know, using SaaS applications. And then to kind of build on that, you know, network transformations with SD-WAN, you know, it's a really key one there where we've got many branch offices now, you know, looking looking at DIA or, or, or kind of, uh, you know, looking at, you know, looking at transforming their networks with SD-WAN, um, you know, to, to kind of decrease cost in that sense. And and then obviously, you know, we're then looking at a more mobile workforce and the increase in encrypted traffic. Of course, that more mobile workforce is only kind of, you know, um, very much apparent today where, you know, we've got everyone, um, you know, working from home or actually, you know, in general, um, you know, over the past uh, number of years, we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of the workforce become more mobile. Um, and because of that, obviously, you know, we have the risk of where your users aren't going to VPN back into the network because of those that, that increase in those SaaS applications. So, you know, how do we begin to kind of, you know, look at these, um, you know, look at these gaps and actually understand them, but also as well as that, how do you look to kind of prevent, um, you know, uh, against those gaps, you know, increase the protection and visibility? Because, as it, you know, as it says there, attackers just aren't sitting idly by. It is, you know, they are always going to be looking at the gaps that you have within your environment. 
So some of the, the kind of resulting challenges we also hear our customers talking about frequently um, is, 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 is also due to kind of the, you know, the major trends here. So what are these and kind of what are our major use cases in that sense? Well, the first one, of course, is, you know, protect the use of cloud applications. You know, make sure that the data, um, uh, you know, I suppose, within those cloud applications, but also, you know, when these users are accessing these cloud applications as an important one, is safe, you know, regardless of whether they are on network or off network, um, you know, connected to a VPN, not connected to a VPN, we want to make sure that they are safe when they access those applications. And then, of course, you know, we look at the, SD, the secure SD-WAN piece and we look at, okay, how do we begin securing the direct internet access um, piece as well, especially where some of those branch offices may not be um, as protected as your, as your HQs or your data centers as such. But of course, then, you know, how do we protect the endpoints both on and off network? Um, only, you know, very, very much kind of apparent, um, you know, especially where we kind of delve in a little bit later into the kind of slides, um, you know, where our endpoints are actually, you know, the, the kind of the, one of the main um, attack vectors. So, you know, the one thing that we want to do is, is make sure that especially while that endpoint is off network, we look at securing it. And then as well as that, you know, to, to help, you know, our, our SOC teams and, and actually to help our businesses in general defend and respond faster to the to the attack slash breach, you know, give us the uh, give us the ability to very much very quickly respond um, better and more efficiently too. So when we look at the kind of cloud transformation, um, it obviously, you know, the thing is, is we need to have a look um, at the, what we class as the big three. You know, very much it kind of boils down to where we look at, um, you know, where, where, we, where we kind of see these attacks. So, of course, you know, the big three being the Internet as a number one source of attacks, of course, you know, it, it expected. But email there, the number one attack vector, and actually 90% of data breaches start with email. Email. It's such a crucial one to, to not forget about. And I think a lot of businesses um, sometimes kind of, um, you know, just as, as kind of take it to granted, it's always important to very much consider email security uh, within that as well. It is still the number one attack vector. And then as well as that, obviously, the endpoint being the number one target for attacks, you know, expected, especially whilst they're off network. So the, B, the big three very much, we need to look at how do we focus in these three main areas to kind of achieve um, you know, better breach defense as, 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 as we talk about it. And to kind of build on to this and, and actually, uh, you know, how do we see this? Well, the internet, of course, is where attack infrastructure is built. And very much when we look at, um, where we look at um, Umbrella specifically, or actually when we begin, um, you know, to delve into some of our threat intelligence, you know, we, <coughs> excuse me, we typically look at, you know, dom domains, um, you know, IP addresses, URLs, and of course, obviously, any malware associated with that as well. You know, it's very much where we look at the, um, when we look at this infrastructure, you know, there are always, you know, there's always going to be domains that are, are kind of newly created, um, or actually IP addresses and, and, and URLs that have been previously used before. Um, and where we find these, where we find these relationships give us, it gives us a really, really good picture um, of, of kind of the, the, the attack infrastructure. And uh, when we look at um, some of the, where we look at kind of some of the solutions in there, how do we begin looking at um, protecting uh, and blocking these threats before day zero occurs? It's very much a key thing where we will, you know, we will analyze, you know, new domains or actually existing domains and continuously analyze um, these key things um, to ensure that, you know, when you, you know, when we request something or actually, you know, our intelligence is always up to date. Um, the next kind of slide, obviously, and, and kind of, um, you know, talking a little bit more about the email side, over 90% of attacks leverage email, and attackers use multiple ways to get in. Um, you know, it, it, it does surprise me, actually, that email is, that is still the number one threat vector. Um, and, but actually, you know, it kind of makes sense. You know, we've seen, you know, especially when we look at malware, you know, ransomware detections are on the up. Um, 
Oh, you know, if we look at it at various examples, um, you know, especially kind of looking at, uh, at the states there, um, you know, the, the 50k ransomware attack that shut down one of the cities, um, you know, in Atlanta, um, uh, you know, has an estimated price to have around 2.7 million uh, to fix. You know, it's, it's, it's humongous when we begin, you know, looking at some of those costs there. Um, business email compromise is, is another key one there, you know, obviously where, you know, where cyber criminals, you know, extensively research, um, you know, a target and, and kind of masquerade as a legitimate party, you know, very much, you know, a key one there. And, and actually there, um, you know, uh, the FBI estimates that um, business email compromise um, cost companies around 5.3 billion um, US dollars around, uh, you know, over three years. It, it's still, um, you know, very much apparent that that is still a thing. Phishing as well, you know, phishing is still, again, you know, uh, look at, you know, we're still looking at costs around 9.1 billion. And that is, of course, just in 2017. And of course, that's going to, you know, that's going to be, you know, increasing as such. Um, and then domain compromise, you know, another one there where we see 54% of legitimate uh, domains used within phishing campaigns um you know that's quite scary actually and it hurts your brand as well uh, you know especially where you know your you, you know your image and in, in your domains are being used in in you know in, in phishing campaigns it's something that we need to look at um you know how do we prevent against that as well so email security is very much and and kind of the the attacks around email are very much still apparent so you know it's always kind of one to, to kind of look at um, and then as well to kind of build on that, you know, the endpoint, as I was saying, is key for, inter uh, you know, it's the, it's the key internal uh, target for attacks, um, you know, there. Um, you know, 70% of breaches involve, um, you know, a compromise of the endpoint in its process. And, and, and actually the reason why is because, you know, 65% um, of organizations say that attacks evaded existing, you know, preventative tools. Um, and actually 48% of, of attackers bypass endpoint defenses because of user error. Um, and, and that all leads to, you know, that 100 days industry detection, um, in, sorry, industry uh, average time to detection. You know, so it's very much still key apparent that you know our endpoints are still the key internal uh, in, internal target for attacks. So we need to look at um, you know securing that further. So when we kind of look at that big three, we very much need to then look at okay, you know your web and uh, your web and internet protection, your endpoint protection, and your email protection. But how are these working together to help you? You know how can you know how do all three you know tie together to be more efficient to help your teams uh, you know uh, with those challenges around you know the time, the expertise. Um, uh, and actually, you know, the visibility side of things. How do they all work together to kind of help, you know, solve that? And, you know, as we say here, you know, imagine coordinated security solutions like air traffic control. You know, otherwise it's like flying planes without an air traffic controller. You know, we very much need to, con you know, it's, it's very much a coordinated um, effort, you know, especially across takeoff, you know, what, you know, uh, you know, as opposed in, in the kind of the air traffic side of things. But, you know, we need to, you know, we need to begin to, to tie these things to three things to, together, give you, you know, some more of that visibility, um, and and actually just think about how that technology can work better for you as well. So. Actually, when we begin to delve into this, actually, you know, we have various things that you know from Cisco that we can help you. Um, and where we begin to look at the internet protection, this is where we look at Umbrella. Um, and Umbrella is very much looking at how do we protect, you know, the user and device, um, you know, when going out, um, you know, when going out to the internet, regardless of where they may be around the world. Um, and, and here, if we just kind of look at the, the, the kind of things that Cisco Umbrella will incorporate, well, we very much look at DNS layer security. We have the secure web gateway as well, or the, or the kind of full proxy there. Um, the cloud delivered firewall, um, the, uh, the CASB functionality. Um, and then as well, we look at kind of the interactive threat intelligence, where we give you the ability to, to look into our threat intel from the Umbrella perspective. Um, and, and actually, this internet protection, and, and when we kind of look at that, 
you know, the key main three there around, you know, DNS based security, the secure web gateway and the cloud limit firewall, you know, really increases your internet protection, um, especially the DNS layer security. Um, you know, it's one that we very much highlight, um, you know, as well, we, you know, we, we talk about, you know, a secure web gateway and, you know, the functionalities that are, you know, a full proxy to that can bring, but the efficacy that, you know, we can achieve by a DNS layer security, um, especially for non-8443 ports is, is still very important. So, you know, very very much look at um, kind of the way Umbrella provides that integrated, um, you know, um, the integrated um, uh, security solutions in that sense as well. But, you know, how do we then look at, you know, Cisco email security as well? So obviously that's the internet side of things where we look at Umbrella. Um, you know, Cisco email security, um, you know, is, still, is another one that we need to look at. And actually the way we do this is we look at, you know, how does those, you know, how do, you know, those emails, you know, kind of flow in. And the very first thing that we'll check in terms of some of the models that we'll use is send a profile um, filtering. And actually, you know, we'll take about 85 to 90, 95% of these messages coming in uh, and we'll use we'll look at them in terms of our sender base reputation and actually you know if we define you know if we see something and we say look you're a bad sender or, or actually where you know we we don't trust it we will just drop it and we'll say actually you know you're you, you know you're not even going to begin to go through the various filters um, but then of course where you know that passes we have the various of the filters that come in where we begin to look at anti-spam antivirus and as well as that um, advanced malware protection so um, you know one of the Cisco solutions that's leveraged within email security um, Cisco AMP to, to help, you know, to understand whether that, that specific email is infected. And of course, if there are any um, items within those emails, then we'll either drop them or quarantine them dependent on the, on the kind of policies that you've set there. Um, and then if that does pass that, then we have gray mail detection, um, you know, very much one of our newer filters to, to kind of look at um, you know, what are, what are we seeing uh, in terms of the, the kind of the URLs that are, that are appearing on that page, but also as well as that, um, you know, rewriting over, over over some of them as well. So actually, you know, we will either decide to rewrite over the email um, or we'll say, yeah, that's absolutely fine. And of course, that'll begin to pass down onto the last two, you know, the outbreak filters and then as well as that real-time URL analysis. So we very much, you know, do a thorough check of these emails that come in and we have various steps of what we can do and at the end either the email is delivered it's quarantined we've rewritten over those URLs that may be malicious or actually we will just drop it and so very much here again you know we have the ability to ensure that that email is safe before it reaches that employee and then just to kind of build on that, when we look at the endpoint itself, um, the kind of the third part of the of the circle um, here, Cisco Advanced Malware Protection for Endpoints, um, very much looking at, okay, how do we secure the endpoint itself? Um, so here, obviously, we, we have our three stages, prevent, the EDR side of things, and remediation. So where we look at the prevent side of things, we look at the machine learning, we look at how do we prevent against fileless malware, it's still, still very, uh, you know, a key one there. And actually, how do we understand and the network traffic protection. And um, there's a very good, uh, a good job of kind of analyzing these, um, the, the, these various models and, uh, and tying a picture together. And then of course, you know, as well as that with the, the EDR perspective, you know, the continuous activity monitoring and the advanced endpoint search using Orbital, um, you know, very much giving you the ability to, to understand, um, you know, what is currently going on with those devices and actually query them as well to see whether you are seeing, you know, various indicators of compromise. Um, and then, of course, when we look at remediation, you know, of course, um, automation, but as well as that, you know, looking at um, custom block and allow lists for files and network traffic, um, you know, and then as well, letting you know where we see vulnerable and low prevalence software, um, you know, being identified on the endpoint, um, you know, some, some, you know, where we begin to then look at that fileless malware is something that we want to look at too. Um, and then the last one there, endpoint isolation, where we begin to tie the greater Cisco solutions in. We could then, you know, automate these processes to say, actually, you know, you have an, you have an infected device. We are automatically going to isolate this endpoint. Um, and, and, and only present the user um, or only allow the user to go out to certain, um, certain websites or to certain servers where they have to then begin to remed auto remediate their device um, and, and where they have to then fix the device before the isolation can be lifted. 
So, you know, with that and when security begins to work together, you begin to see more, you'll block more because of that, um, but it allows your teams to react faster, you know, uh, and, and that ties into the automate process there as well, you know, where we're able to react faster because of the automation, but as well as that, give you the greater visibility to your teams in terms of understanding what is completely going on. Um, you know, you have the ability to very much, um, you know, more efficiently understand and say, okay, yeah, this is what we want to do and this is the actions we want to take um, and, and therefore the last one there you know completely respond you know where we then understood what the actions we need to do we, we apply that we take them out very quickly um, ensure that the threat um, you know has been neutralized and then you know continue out various investigations after that but it's all about how do we react a lot faster especially when the industry average time to detect is 100 days how can we bring that down to a number of hours so of course to to to, to kind of just go over and, and and kind of recap um, and to kind of expand on how we begin tying these three items together, you know, where we, you know, where we see more, you know, wherever your users work, um, we need to look at, you know, a single console that can help us with everything that has happened within the environment. So Umbrella, of course, you know, as one of our customers says, you know, we can see internet activity across er every device, you know, everywhere, you know, regardless of where they may be. And for, um, uh, and for endpoints, we can see everything happening on the endpoint, even 30 days back. And then, of course, email we can see exactly how attackers are trying to compromise our users email um, and as well as that obviously we then begin to tie things together using that single console or actually within Cisco known as Cisco threat response how do we investigate and respond to threats very quickly and confidently as well so you know around the simple side you know detect investigate and remediate across multiple integrated security technologies um, respond faster you know reduce time spent on security operation functions up to 85 percent um, but of course it's got to be effective as well you know if, you know incre you know increase the threat intelligence that comes into that and we can of course integrate that in as well um, and and here, the best part is, and it's you know, is that it's free with any existing Cisco security licenses. You know, uh, you know, it's rare that Cisco will give you something for free, but it's it's a tool to really help your teams to 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 build on that as well. So you know, very much, you know, look at threat response, um, especially for your SOC teams. How can we very, you know, how can we quickly understand what's going on within the environment? Tie the picture together to understand that, okay, you know, the it started from this email, um, which you know is attached to this domain um, and give you the ability to see where it's um, you know where this is um, kind of entered into your environment um, and where it is around your environment as well so just to kind of you know uh, delve into that in a little bit further you know where we begin to to compare you know your SecOps teams with with and without threat response well the first thing that we have to do without threat response are actually where we have you know uh, segregated um, solutions that you know that don't integrate well you know here the first thing that comes in is an IFC or alert you know where we you know we have uh, you know the uh, you know where we might have a CISO come to us or you know someone you know someone from the board and say you know look um, DNS binage or, or, or wanna cry, you know, are we, you know, are we affected, um, you know, with, with this attack? You know, do we let, do we see this within the environment? And of course, obviously what your teams have got to do is you've got to say, okay, well, stand by, you know, we need to, to go back, you know, we need to go to, you know, all of our solutions and understand, you know, where firstly, actually, um, what are the IFCs for that? And then as well, where have we seen them? So, you know, we've got to then do some research on Google. We've got to say, right, you know, the first thing that comes in if someone says, do we have DNS being ours? Well, what we've got to do is we've got to look at the IOCs that's coming. Um, so, um, you know, we've got to research those IOCs. Then we've got to go through our multiple dashboards. So we'll go to product one, then the product two, then the three, and then four, and actually begin to, you know, look through the reports and see, you know, whether we've been, you know, affected by anything. And then, of course, you know, to build on that, we've then got to go back into all of them and action and remediate once we've seen an IOC. So, you know, it can take, you know, up to 32 minutes or, or on average, you know, around that time to, to kind of understand what's, um, to understand what firstly what's going on, um, to, to kind of investigate, you know, have we seen it, have we not seen it, and then actually what is the, the collective action that we're going to take? 
But you know where we want to help you out? We have Cisco threat response. You know where we be, you know where someone may say, okay, we do we have the espionage with the environment? Do we have the specific, um, you know, um, as, attack that's currently ongoing? You know, within the environment, let's take the IOCs from the, um, you know, that may be displayed on a website. We have a browser plugin, and literally you can capture all of those IOCs automatically. Or you know, with threat response, you can copy and paste the entire page, and it will automatically go through and look at the ISCs that, are, that you've pasted in. You know, here it's very quick and easy, literally just to copy and paste the entire page, um, all those ISCs, um, all use our browser plugin, um, which will very easily just pivot you through to threat response. And threat response will do the rest for you. It will query all solutions, um, you know, all Cisco security solutions for you, present it in the, in the single dashboard and say, look, this is what we found. You know, uh, eight out of nine domains um, or eight out of nine emails that have came through or, or kind of whatever the attack vector was, you know, is malicious. Um, you know, we these are all blocked um, and have been prevented, but you've got this one here that we're a little bit unsure on. It's marked as gray. You know, can you, you know, uh, okay, we, we can then as a SOC team begin to do further investigation on that. And of course, we say actually that can take around five minutes. It's really, really simple and easy to do so. And the best part is, you know, if you are Cisco, you know, if you do have Cisco security solutions, you know, threat response is free. Um, you know, do leverage that as well to kind of help speed things up. So, you know, the one thing as well as that, and, and I kind of touched on it, is actually automation. You know, here, um, you know, some, uh, you know, one of our customers says, sorry, you know, we use um, to sp we used to spend our synchronizing tools to block threats everywhere and piece together solutions. But, you know, where we begin to tie this in, um, you know, within threat response and actually begin looking at Talos itself, you know, we can begin looking at, you know, um, unified threat intelligence and actually show you and visualize those threats within the environment and just let the tools take automated, um, you know, actions rather than, you know, rather than us having to spend hours trying to get those tools talking together, you know, threat response and the leverage of Talos, we can begin to instantly block that everywhere across all of our tools, um, you know, whether that be through, um, you know, internet uh, protection or via email, protect or, uh, you know, pr pr um, block all of those threats and kind of, um, you know, prevent better as well. Um, where we kind of build into Talos, I've kind of mentioned you know, mentioned it, but Talos is very much looking at, you know, Cisco's, you know, greater threat intelligence research arm. You know, how do we gather threat intelligence from all Cisco security devices? You know, how can we, you know, begin looking at IOCs that we, you know, we've seen come through, you know, our IDS, IDP solutions, or actually through from Umbrella. Um, but what that means is, is that we have the ability to look at, you know, um, all of this data and and here, you know, we see 2.2 um, trillion artifacts a day. Um, and that actually makes Talos um, the largest non-governmental threat, intelli threat intelligence and, and research arm. We have an unmatched visibility into what is going on within the internet or actually what's going on within our customers' environments. Um, you know, and it all helps, you know, all of this data gets fed back to all Cisco security devices. Um, you know, every five minutes they'll get an update, understand, you know, what are the new threats out there, what is currently going on, and you'll always have the latest threat intelligence coming into your devices. And the best part is, you know, where you have a Cisco security device, you know, you'll automatically still, you know, be looking at using and, and gaining threat intelligence from Talos. So, you know, again, to, to kind of recap this, you know, where we look at our integrated security architecture, defend better and respond faster. Umbrella and for endpoint emails working together harmoniously with, you know, Cisco threat response there, um, you know, uh, you know, with that giving you the single pane or, or actually what we say is, is a dashboard to very easily look at, um, you know, responding to those threats or actually where we begin to look at threat investigations. And to power all of that, we have Talos, you know, give us the, you know, give us the greater threat intelligence to all of our, you know, security um, portfolio here and make it easier for my teams, um, you know, uh, and actually, you know, make it easy for these tools to do a lot of the automation and actually do a lot of the, you know, the remediation. And then where my teams are needed, you know, show us the threat intelligence to say, you know, this is what, this is what is malicious. This is what we, you know, we don't know. This is what we need to investigate further and give that to my team to give them more time back. So yeah, of course, you know, where to, to kind of uh, to kind of recap all of that. 
do begin to look at the three, you know, the big three, where we want the big three to work together. This is where we begin to simplify. And this is where we begin to close those gaps we saw at the beginning. You know, internet being the number one source of attacks, email being the number one attack vector, and endpoints being the number one target for attacks. If we begin, to, you know, closing those gaps that we saw at the beginning and actually begin solving these challenges, you know, we'll give your teams back greater time. Um, you know, they'll have the ability to, to, to investigate and research those threats more thoroughly, um, you know, and therefore protect and defend the business better. And also then, you know, where your board may come knocking on your SOC, uh, your SOC team's doors to say, have we seen this within the environment? Have we seen that within the environment? Give you the ability to very quickly and easily within, you know, five or 10 minutes say, actually, you know, we haven't, we're okay, or actually we have, we're already on it. You know, we're, you know, we're already beginning, we're already beginning to look at remediation in that sense. Um, and, you know, remain and, and allow your teams to remain, you know, and, and remain calm and, and, you know, where these attacks, uh, attacks begin come in, come in, you know, give them the visibility, um, you know, and the expertise, you know, from the, from the threat intelligence to make it easier for them. And so very much, you know, where, you know, if, if you need to look at these three, it is something that Cisco can, can give you a, can give you a hand on. So I say, you know, as well, you know, what we've spoken about today, I'm very much, especially as a, a technical solution specialist, I always encourage, you know, customers to try it, you know, sign up for Umbrella, um, you know, we'll give, uh, sign up for AMP for Endpoint and sign up for email security. We have, you know, um, we have trials for all three products uh, and, and you can very quickly go on there, you know, sign up for a trial and actually begin integrating it with, within your environment. You know, the teams are there to, to kind of help your businesses out if you, if you need them to look at, um, you know, how how would you begin deploying, you know, these products within your environment? Um, and, and, you know, check them out. Give them a good test. I always say, you know, um, you know, don't just take my word for it. Test it within the environment. You know, have a good play around with it and then leverage Cisco threat response and, and actually see for yourself, um, you know, when it comes to kind of the ease of use and when it comes to the, uh, uh, the kind, you know, when it comes to kind of, um, you know, detecting, you know, better and, and responding faster as such.